following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day from TFNN. Welcome to the July 19th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary day, an extraordinary weekend, an extraordinary life. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past, well, 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening in at the normal time frame, it's 8.07 right now. We're going to make this show as pertinent as we can for you today, provide you with some numbers so that you can take a look at where price is trading in relation to those numbers at the uh, 1 o'clock hour as well as coming into today's close. Of course, if you're listening in live, I would love to hear from you. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered. Just send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question and, of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic friday of course this is tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes welcome to lush show right now dow equity futures are trading up 77 points the print is 27 278 s p futures are up five they're trading out at 3002 nasdaq futures up 16 about two tenths of a percent to the upside trading at 7950 russell 2000 futures are flat trading out at 1558 Overseas, last evening, you had the uh, Shanghai finish up 24 points, 8 tenths of a percent. The Hang Seng up over 1 percent. That was 303 points. And the Nikkei up at 2 percent, 420 points to the upside. In Australia, the S&P 200 there finishing up 51 points or 8 tenths of a percent. This morning, we've got uh, Europe is trading higher. The DAX is up 1 tenth of a percent or 12 points. The FTSE up about one, a little over 1 tenth of a percent. That's 9 points. She's trading at 75.02 out there. Goldilocks trading out at 14.38. That's up nearly 11 bucks. And silver 16.41. That's 21 cents to the upside. Light sweet crude getting in on the action. 69 pennies. One and a quarter percent trading out at 55.99. T-bond futures, uh, the 30-year uh, back uh, six ticks and uh, two ticks on the uh, 10-year note. Uh, King dollar is up 236 uh, ticks out there. I've got a 10-minute delay, so it may be something slightly higher than that. The euro trading lower, the pound lower, the yen lower, the Canadian dollar, the loonie is uh, lower. There's your strength inside the U.S. dollar index. Uh, and this is a chart that I always like to start off um, with. Uh, typically, I will lead with this. I in this morning inside the newsletter had other things that I wanted to show but just to give folks a perspective as what's going on across the globe what's going on inside the futures markets whether it's equity futures or it's commodity futures or uh, debt futures out there uh, just to get a perspective on the day and what is going on now the first question that came in uh, coming from uh, John of the Tiger's Den and the question is looking at both sides of the trade for the Treasury bonds and the question is where's the low risk buy for a long and where is the low risk short uh, for a short <laughs> out there. Um, John, it's, uh, it'd be pretty easy for me to just simply pull over this chart here and first to let you know I have a bearish bias. Now, I don't have a bearish bias, although you could say I have a bearish bias. It's the daily chart that has the bearish bias. What I mean by that, folks, is if we take a look at this chart out here, uh, this is the daily time frame chart. You'll notice that I've got... Um, Actually, I actually have this little stair step line 
That's the weekly oscillator and change line, or the weekly Stevie Green line. For those of you that listen to the show, now we take a look at that green slash red line right now. They're both green out there. And where prices trade in relation to those is very helpful to you and I. So the easy answer, John, with regard, where is that low risk sell opportunity? It's a 155 in, uh, in I don't know if it's, uh, I've got to do the math conversion out here, probably about uh, 155, 15, uh, something like that out there. Uh, that's Stevie's green line. I say that because what we're seeing is a bounce price is trading above the top of its profile out there. And so that is really the next resistance point. If you're looking for a daily time frame, where's the next um, sell opportunity? As far as where would the next buy opportunity be, well, that would be perhaps down towards the bottom of its profile. But again, I think that what's really transpiring here, John, inside the Treasury bonds is going to be the makeup of an A to B equals CD to the downside. I, I say that simply because we did see T-bonds break through the bottom of a prior box. We have a new box that formed below the prior box. Yes, price is above resistance. That says, okay, where's the next resistance level? That's Stevie's green line. That may be where price is headed to in order to generate an A to B equal CD to the downside. That would be, is this thing going to let me draw it? It's going to screw with me. Um, that, that's not the A to B equals CD. You're, you're proficient with this, and so you know what it is that we would be looking for. Ultimately, where I believe that T-bonds are headed back to is the breakout area, the most recent breakout area, and that's 148.13 out there. So that's on the daily time frame chart. Now, I don't know if your question was with regard to a daily time frame or some other type of time frame out there. If you were looking at a shorter-term time frame, and by shorter, I'm suggesting a 30-minute time frame out here, then... Here, right now, T-bonds are, so we were suggesting that T-bonds might head higher out there. And uh, the 30-minute chart says resistance is right around the 155.04 level. That's a TDST resistance line. We saw price poke above it just slightly yesterday afternoon, then it got right back down below there. Uh, we see here basically a series of uh, both higher highs and lower lows. So right now, I don't have a good short-term buy opportunity level for you. That would have to be 154.05. That's that uh, support area. The potential support area, 153.28 is another one. But from the uh, low risk to the short side would be 155.04. Um, no other pattern really that is present when I take a look at the 30-minute time frame out there. You asked about T-bonds. You know, one of the things that newsletter subscribers get each day um, is uh, this, and they get this for many different instruments. We'll kind of go through that this morning here. It might make it easy for everybody. So, John, not knowing the time frame that you're looking at, here are your TAS market profiles. Your TAS market profiles being for a one-hour, a two-hour, your five-hour time frame, which I know you love, the daily as well as the weekly. You'll also see at 156.05, that's a, a new weekly profile that formed for Treasury bonds. It formed last week. So 156.05 is a significant resistance level as well. So hopefully this uh, chart here, this set of charts with regard to profiles will work for you and your specific time frame out there. So thanks for writing in. And folks, I want to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648. Of course, if you're listening at the normal time at now 1.14 in the afternoon, don't call in. Not that we don't want you to call, just that I'm not there because it's 8.14 in the morning. So we get back from this uh, first breakout here. Let's go take a look at uh, what Stevie loves to look at because you should love to look at it too because it is one of the keys to understanding these markets. And that is where is the flow of capital going just over the past four days? Where is it flowing out of? We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. C C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our second question. This one coming in from uh, Earl. Earl writes in, says, uh, hey, Steve. Uh, hi. Hey, Earl. Uh, actually, he said hi, not hey, but... Uh, uh, using seasonal times, so uh, he's referring to the seasonal time frame. So let me go ahead and put that uh, chart up on our screen for us. So he says, uh, Earl says, hey, Steve, uh, using seasonal times, is now the time to take profits and wait for October to buy again? Will the market uh, go back to the June uh, 3rd, 4th levels out here? So first, with regard to seasonal folks, if we take a look at, uh, so you've heard of the sell in May cycle, uh, really the market is broken down into favorable and unfavorable seasonal cycles. For example, the favorable seasonal cycle really kicks off at the end of January. Now, this is the average of the Dow over the last 86 years out here. And right around the end of January, around January 30th out there, is typically where we see the Dow move higher into May. The first high usually comes in around the middle of May, May 19th. Sometimes it can be May 1st out there. And usually we see things chug along. Then right around June 25th, we get a little bottom, one last push for, uh, into the summertime blues. And the summertime blues typically, and by the way, who sings the summertime blues out there? But if we take a look at where the summertime blues begins, it's July 21st. Now today's July 19th. 21st becomes, what, Sunday out there? Uh, so are we near that time period where uh, it appears that uh, the markets may be moving lower? Well, what I like to do with these cycle time frames, Earl, is see what the patterns are that are present inside the markets out here. So if we do that, um, and then the other thing, here's this chart, folks, that you certainly want to make sure that you're aware of. Here's the Dow. These are the cash indices, the Dow, the S&P, upper left, upper right, and then the NASDAQ, lower left, and the Russell 2000, lower right. If you take a look at the uh, 
two upper panels, Dow and S&P, you can see that prices run right into a trend line resistance level out there. So we're also up against a resistance zone. We're into the potentially where the market would typically turn down. Same thing for the NASDAQ 100 out there. The Russell 2000, which has just simply been trading sideways for many months, has not been able to break above 16 or close above, I should say, 16 02 out there. So everything here points to, okay, we're up towards a resistance level. Then the question is, well, what's going on in the short-term time frame? With regard to the Dow, the Dow here, and I'll thank uh, John in the Tiger's Den for, in essence, pointing this out to me. Although, when we were talking uh, yesterday, it's really not looking at the Dow. Instead, it's looking at the uh, S&P. And notice the same pattern out there, which is a Tommy DeMarc sequential pattern. Now, in the case of the Dow, the Dow confirmed, this is the Dow that we're looking at, it also confirmed a, uh, time, well, yesterday was the confirmation of that TD sequential count. The actual uh, sequential count, number 13, took place out here a few days ago on the 15th out there. And then it was yesterday's close below the bar of the close four bars earlier that generated the sell signal for the Dow. So, Earl, you have a sell pattern, valid sell pattern, inside the Dow that is lining up with the seasonal, that is lining up with trading into resistance. So all I can do is share with you, you've got everything in there to, in essence, uh, draw the conclusion that you have. Now, I also want to make this specific statement. I do not believe that the highs that we've seen, and even though we're up in this trend line resistance area, are highs that are going to last over the course of the next year or so. So that is my take out there. So with regard to trading accounts versus long-term retirement accounts, look, with regard to any account, price is up towards resistance. You use that information how you wish. Take a look at that seasonal cycle, then take a look at the daily time frame charts and the ES Mini as an example on a daily time frame. It has confirmed a top. That's the Rose Momentum Indicator top. The last significant top inside the Dow, or inside the ES Mini, by the way, took place out here May Day, May 1st. That was with the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top out there. So there's your, your signal inside the ES Mini. So you've got that. Price is trading below Stevie's green line, trading within the profile. If you're a conservative trader, you won't get a confirmed change in trend signal. Now, look, these patterns don't always work. They work enough. I don't, I don't mean enough like a flip of a coin enough. They work well much more. Well, well much more. Good Lord. Send me back to grammar school. But you know what I mean out here. Here's the point. Here's the number. If you're a conservative trader, uh, there's not going to be a confirmed change in trend until you see a key level of support fail. And right now, that is the bottom of its bearish structure daily profile. And that's 2969.50. 29.69.50. For those of you not familiar with the ES Mini, don't be using round numbers out here. It only moves in quarters out there. You're always going to get to a round number. You know, you, you get two out of four are going to be round. Uh, uh, well, you've got uh, a quarter, 50 cents, 75, and then you're at whole numbers out there. So in essence, two two out of five are going. In that, it's 29.69.50 inside the equity futures for the ES Mini. If price closes below that, uh, then you've got a confirmed change change in trend. If we take a look at the NDX1, uh, the NASDAQ, the NQ, I should say, uh, it's got a confirmed pattern out here. It's Larry Pesavento's uh, three drive to a top pattern. That has formed. That has confirmed. It confirmed back here. The way that patterns confirm, folks, is they generate these bullish or bearish reversal candles. In this case here, we got the bearish reversal candle. You got a bear sash candle. You got a key reversal sandal, candle and sandal. Uh, that all taking place on July 16th out there. So unless those highs get taken out, and even if the high gets taken out, that's 8,001.50. What that's going to do is that's going to get you to letter number G, wave number 7. And at wave number 7, that's where you can see changes in trend as well out there. So the NQ has a topping signal. So now, Earl, you've got a topping signal inside on a daily basis of the ES. Inside, and which is the S&P 500 as well. If I put that out there, it's got the same signals. The NASDAQ, the NDX 100, the NQ, and the Dow. The Russell 2000 it doesn't have any signals out there, so to speak, other than the signal of just simply being all out weak. So, Earl, that's what the uh, markets are doing out there. I hope that uh, helps to answer your question. What I did answer was, will things pull back to the June 3rd area? 
inside the ES Mini, if it closes below, if price closes below the 29.69.50 level, then the answer is more likely yes than no. Yes, because the breakout level, this is where price would then usually pull back to when you see a change in trend, it would pull back to where price most recently broke out. And that was on June the 4th. That was at the 2744 level, that breakout, that red horizontal line brought to you by uh, Tommy DeMarc, the TD uh, ST. That's the uh, uh, trend line resistance uh, level out here. This is really what I refer to as the breakout area, 27.44. So, uh, but first things first, the ES Mini is going to have to break through that support level um, in order to uh, get that uh, message that uh, price may head back into those June uh, areas out there. And what you and I, Earl, will have to do most certainly is just simply pay attention. If price does continue to move lower, we just simply have to continue to keep paying attention to uh, any patterns that might form uh, on the way down, just as we would on the way up. So hope that that answers your question out there. So with regard to that, taking that one step forward, or what's that next step? So here's what we know. We know that the ES Mini, we know that the NQ uh, formed a high about four days ago, a confirmed high out there. I like to look at the global flow of capital, which is what this chart here does. And I know we're going into break. But here's the here's the issue, both Earl, that you and I have right now. You see, the Dow equity futures contract, they're down in every currency except for euros over the last four days. Those are the folks that are buying right now. If you're holding euros, you're not so sure about a sell signal. You know you don't want to hold on to euros. That's for sure. Right. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, if you're listening in and it's 1.30 in the afternoon, thanks so much for doing that. We're actually recording the show live. It's 8.30 in the uh, morning. We'll be back to normal programming on uh, Monday out here, but really trying to make the show pertinent for any hour of the day. Uh, we just spent some time because of a question that Earl had posed with regard to seasonality, uh, market top signals, things of that sort, uh, what to anticipate. And Earl's asking about going into the to the unfavorable seasonal cycle, which doesn't typically end until the middle of October out here. Now, when we the chart that we're looking at right now, it's not actually a chart; it's just a set of data. Uh, but these are these are perhaps the most important pieces of data that you, as a trader, need to understand. So if the charts are correct. The ES has topped. The uh, NASDAQ has topped. Uh, the Dow has topped out here. What we really need to see is it's not just about uh, how those vehicles are trading in your dollars. It is to you. You're really only interested yourself in uh, how is this trading and am I making money or losing money in your currency? You don't spend time sitting there. Typically, you don't spend time saying, hey, what's the other guy thinking? The other guy being the other guy sitting in euros or sitting in pounds or sitting in yen, okay, primary currencies out there, primary reserve currencies out there, and that's really a must. Think about it like this. If out, without knowing that information, you're trading with your, you, you, you have the information, it's available to you. It's available to me. If it's available to me, it's available to you. So it's available to us out there. And we really need to know if you're playing poker, as an example, those of you that play poker, it, I don't care whether it's Texas Hold'em or it's a seven card, you know, whatever out there. Um, but, well, don't you like to know what the other guys are holding? Or if you're playing blackjack, don't you want to know what the dealer is holding out there? Y the answer to that is yes. So then, in, and you would pay dearly for that. Yet, why, is, why aren't you doing that when it comes to the markets and understanding what the dealer has or what the other guy has? Because in order for something to move lower or move higher and do it in a concerted way, it must be moving higher or lower in all those major currencies. Otherwise, if you're wondering who's buying, because if in the term of euros, price is still rising, and it has over the past four days out there versus it's moved lower in terms of yen, pounds, and U.S. dollars out there. There's your natural buyer. So that's what this chart here shows. We also can take a look at the uh, indices, uh, the DAX, the FTSE. You can see each of those over the last four days are moving lower in all currencies out here. So money's not flowing into those areas, okay? It's not flowing into the Nikkei. The Nikkei was up 2%. Up 2% last night, yet it's still down uh, over the course of the last four days. We take a look at the topping signals that came in. And I use the topping signals of the U.S. market as our benchmark to figure out what is the global flow of capital doing. Look, this is a short-term time frame. Just using from four days, I know that in order to be short, which I am, that um, uh, that I what I need to see, what we need to see out here, uh, the ES Mini, um, you know, that's over in the upper right hand uh, corner. Uh, some you, you, we see the market is up over in uh, over in uh, 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 Hong Kong. The Hang Seng is uh, higher in all major currencies out there. Australia, we talked about how they closed higher last night. Uh, so you can see a flow of capital into those areas, emerging markets up slightly as well. Um, so it's really important to take a look at there. I believe that's important to take a look at that. What, what subscribers and I look at each morning is this chart here, where I'm just taking a look at the dominant. Uh, I'm looking at the Dow and ES Mini as far as their futures and how they're trading in currencies. This is as of today. What's going on? What's going on in T-bonds out there? So, for example, John was asking me about T-bonds. Where's a good buy or where's a good short in opportunity? What John now knows is that in taking a look at this, even though we're down just a few ticks, um, uh, 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 330 seconds inside of T-bonds and dollars. What he also knows is that's not the case with regard to Treasury bonds in terms of euros, pounds, and yen. Those are all higher this morning. So there may be sellers in the U.S., John, but there's buyers over here. I say buyers because they're not losing money in their currency. 
you kind of see what I mean out here. So I'm always looking for, hey, is there some kind of divergence or not with regard to, in this case here, I'm taking a look at T-bonds, equity futures, uh, the DAX down below, uh, and so forth. And this is really a helpful understanding of what's going on. What uh, subscribers also see each day or each morning out here is they see the TAS market profiles for daily and weekly time frames. Just numerically, the top is center and the bottom of the boxes. All of these instruments out there, commodity futures as well, down at the bottom. If you trade those, you want to know this information. You may not use daily and weekly time frames, so Stevie has you covered there. You've got the 30 minute, the 60 minute, the 120 minute, and the five hour time frame. Again, with all their pertinent profile levels, and for we're all visual. So some people uh, like just looking at the numbers. Just give me the facts, ma'am, out here. For those that are visual, they then get this. John and I and you, we took a look at the same set of charts here for treasury bonds inside the newsletter each day is the visual version of this on the 61 2300 daily and weekly time frame where you can see where price is trading in relation to each of those are there green shoots red shoots what color shoots are they out here just simply to assist you with your trading investing you get that for the es you get that for the nq you get that for the dow you get that for the russell 2000 so if you're trading any of those instruments information is king out there i believe that it is and if this is information that uh, if you're trading those vehicles this information should be helpful to you whether it's gold here's the uh, if we take a look at goldilocks we haven't taken a look at goldilocks steve-o is like paul revere riding through your neighborhood uh, just simply saying uh, be careful be careful be careful out here don't get too caught up into the emotion look i am a, a non-emotional trader I trade by the emotion of the markets, but just simply, we know the patterns that identify tops and bottoms. When they are present, we pay attention for them. We know the steps involved with confirming bearish signals and bullish signals out there. Um, and uh, so we'll go, we'll go back to gold. Here's light sweet crude. Uh, light sweet crude, uh, you know, again, all these different time frames with their profiles to assist you. Again, we had already taken a look at T-Bond. So, so here they are. So in essence, that is what uh, subscribers are seeing each morning. I'd love for you to be a subscriber to get that data out there what's an element that you're going to be looking for uh today um today one of the elements you're going to be using as a guideline is you know where's the spot vix index trading in relationship to its 50-day exponential moving average as long as price remains below that by the way the 50-day here we can see right now at 8 37 in the morning is 14 67 we're trading at 13 49 also tells us that there's plenty of liquidity in the market. That is what the spot volatility index is used for. There are many tools with inside the spot volatility index that can assist you in being, able to, in being able to identify what the market, what the message of the market is, what it's communicating to you and I. The number of the spot volatility index does not matter. The only thing that matters is, is it above the 50-day or is it below the 50-day exponential moving average? For proof of that, go back to 2009 when it was in the 50s and 60s and 40s. And if you take a look at March 2009 and you see when the market took off, you will see that even though it was registered in the 40s or 50s, it was trading below the 50-day exponential moving average. The number doesn't matter. Where it's trading in relationship to that does. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So uh, 8.42 in the morning uh, right now. If you're listening at the normal time, thanks so much for doing that. Uh, we've got uh, Dow Futures up 74 points, ES Mini up 5, NASDAQ up 18 and a half. Uh, George writes in in the Tiger's Den, says, Steve, uh, do you think the market holds up today or that was just a bounce to be sold uh, yesterday? Um, here's what I can share with you is really the facts, uh, George, and then you can kind of make that decision out here. Uh, and I'll just simply go to the TAS market profile. So hopefully, George, you've been listening in uh, during the uh, one of the first or second segment. Uh, we had taken a look at the general markets and their sell patterns and signals that are out there. Now, one of the ones that we looked at was the NQ. And so the NQ, George, might be a place that uh, you would focus on and pay attention to today. Uh, you're asking, was the uh, bounce or was the move higher yesterday, overnight, this morning? Uh, was that uh, something to be sold? So if we just hone in on the NQ out here, and here's the daily time frame for the NQ. And let me turn off price, uh, George, because uh, you may or may not be familiar with this or somebody else listening may or may not be familiar with. I'm going to turn off price. You're going to say, why are you turning off price? I turn off price because price is irrelevant other than, hey, where is it trading? And where is it trading in relationship to, in essence, this TAS daily market profile, which formed just a few days ago? The importance of this market profile, George, is to recognize and to know that the structure of it is bearish. And that's both a, a bullish piece of information, a bearish piece of information for you and I, depending on where the close is at. What we know, and it's bearish in structure for the following reason. It's, it's because of where sellers are lined up. What the profiles tell us is they tell us where support and resistance is, and then and that's the top and the bottom. So resistance at 79.75, sellers are lined up there. Just think of it as Humpty Dumpty on the wall with his squadron of, uh, of uh, snipers, as well as uh, buyers are all lined up. That's the other wall of Humpty the Dumpty at 77.94. That's where all the pieces get put together again. So you've got support and resistance. I always like to think of these lines as my virtual football field. And the top and the bottom are nothing more than the uh, first down markers, if you will. Uh, they change distance-wise. Uh, you can see that on the chart here. 
Uh, but then what's really important is that point of control, that center line of the box. If it is nearer or closer in proximity to the top, then you have a bearish structure because there is where both buyers and sellers are believe there's fair value with inside this price area. So for Stevie, if you've got sellers there, you also have some buyers, but sellers there and sellers just above at 79.75, to me, that is lined up. That is resistance. So now if we put price up there, your sell area, so if uh, John were to have asked the question not about T-bonds, but, hey, where's your low-risk opportunity to sell the NQ? Well, we know that it's at the top of that profile. It's at 79.75.65 out there. That is the resistance area out here. So, George, if price closes above that, I have an expression, which is there is nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern out there. Uh, that would say, well, things would be relatively bullish in the NQ. But really just closing above that isn't going to do it for me. This isn't going to do it for Stevie. And that is because even though we've got the three drive to a top pattern, if it does take out the highs from July 16th out here, and that which means that price moves above that profile, well, then what happens is it gets to wave number G, wave number seven, I should say, letter number G on, uh, on my uh, screen out here. We're not there because we aren't in that. And when you get to that letter number G or wave number seven, that is where you can also see a significant change in trend out there, whether it's at the bottom or whether it's at the uh, top. So, George, is this answering your question? Um, what we know, let's just summarize. What, let's just state the facts. Let's just stay by the numbers. Here's what we know. The NQ has, in essence, bounced right up into resistance. Does the market hold up today or finish up slightly higher? Or I don't know. What's really important, George, for you and I to understand is does the NQ close above 79.75 or, or not? The key level for the NQ to bust through in order for a change in trend or for that three drive to a top pattern to take hold has to be a close below support, 77.94, 70 out there. So that's what we know when we take a look at the uh, market uh, profiles out here. We don't have the same test of those highs inside the ES or the Dow. And, George, this is the reason for us to take a look at the NQ, because perhaps the message really lies with inside the NQ. In other words, if the NQ can get above resistance out there, uh, then what we should see is the ES Mini, which also has a bearish structured box. That should be able to make its move up to the 3023 level out there. Inside the Dow Equity Futures contract, the Dow yesterday, George, was giving us the signal that there should be more rally because what price was able to do was close above its bullish structured profile. So here's the bullish structured profile. Uh, we talked about the bearish structured. Here you can see the center of the box which is at 27,249, much closer to the bottom at 27,175. So we knew that, and, and that's what I was looking for yesterday, was a close below 27,175. If we had gotten that yesterday, then, George, my answer would be easier to say, hey, you've gotten the confirmed change in trend here. The Dow can go ahead and pull things down. But it didn't. And why? Because you had a substantial number of buyers hanging out between 27,175 and 27,249 out there. So hopefully that is helpful to you in interpreting what the message of the markets is and it really all boils down to the NQ. Now if we take a look at the NQ and go to a short-term time frame out here George what you're going to see is that uh, last evening at about 6 30 or so you had a TD set up nine count that turned out to be the high price backed off it found some support this morning at the bottom of a 30 minute box out there uh, there's only uh, uh, I'm assuming that at 1556.60 on a 30 minute that's both the point of control the center of the box is we don't see one out here and the top of the box which is at 1559 1560.30 is the resistance level inside the 30 minute time frame out there if price moves above that um, then you would anticipate uh, further rally um, as well uh, this morning. So, but you've got your data points. You know where real resistance is out here, and hopefully that assists you in your uh, with, with 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 my you know reply to to your question out there. And thanks for the question, much appreciated. Uh, no other questions that have come in that I'm aware of just yet. And so let's go take a look at something John pointed out in the Tiger's Den, which was, hey, man, Doctor Copper has taken off and uh, took off without him, and took off without me, and took off with a lot of other folks. And where is this headed to? Well, here's what we know right now about Doctor Copper today is that it's trading above 
2.7425. That is the breakdown line on a daily basis. Uh, we can see how that level has held. That's the beauty of the uh, TD setup nine count, just because the nine count assists us with a potential top or bottom and also provides us with a key level of where price broke out or broke down. Price gets back to breakdown areas, breaks down. It's not unusual for price to pull back the support line on a daily basis for uh, copper was at 2.6435. You did see it close below it on July 9th. You always like to have follow through. Follow through means an additional close below it the next day. Didn't happen. Price got back above it. Said to you and I, because it was also bullish candle and a wide ranging bar, hey, I'm headed back to resistance. Well, today, that resistance appears to have been taken out. All depends upon the close. The next move could be to 2.9235. However, Notice the Tom DeMarc setup counts. Today's going to be day eight. Tops can occur on day eight, nine, the day following bar nine. He wrote with TFN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go to our uh, last question out here. This is coming in from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent is up early because it's uh, 5.54 in the morning out there. Uh, of course, the early bird catches the uh, worm. And so uh, Brent writes in and said, could you please go over gold, anything on the shorter-term tra uh, trade? Uh, it hit 1454 last night. It's since pulled back. Any potential short-term top in your counts and resistance levels? Uh, have a great weekend. You too, Brent. Uh, Brent, first let's take a look at the daily time frame here for gold, um, which, by the way, we're taking a look at both the uh, weekly and daily task market profile. So 1442.90. Uh, was the top of its weekly profile. Price closed over it just slightly uh, yesterday. It has uh, pulled back underneath that area. It is a bearish structured box out here with the bottom of the box uh, being at uh, 1291.40. That's really not going to matter at this. Whoops. Don't know what happened there. That's really not going to matter come into play until price closes below 1391.70. 1391.70 happens to be both, in essence, the bottom of its daily profile and the center line of its bearish structured weekly profile, which is at 1392.40. So here's what we know. So far, prices, resistance has held uh, inside of the gold contract. What else do we know about gold? Well, what we know about gold is we take a look at this daily contract and Stevie's other tools out here. Price was moving higher, doing less relative energy, makes wave number G, letter number G, singing the key of G out there. At And that cannot be confirmed until Monday out here. But you do have now two additional potential topping signals on the daily time frame out there. And, um, you know, and says, hey, price could pull back into the 1336 level out here. So that's what the daily time frame chart is telling you and I. The weekly time frame chart has already told, has already spoken spoken and by uh, when i say spoken i mean that it's already confirmed an a to b equals cd to the upside confirmation took place a few weeks ago when the shooting star candle formed out there brent i don't have anything on the shorter term cycles here's the 30 minute uh, pattern uh, the 30 minute chart out here nothing to identify a top or bottom watch 14 22 10 on any move lower if that fails, then price continues to move lower. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned for a great hour. Larry Pesavento at 9, David White at 1. I'll see you on Monday. Take care.